Hey guys, welcome back to the Snap Ring Chronicles. Uh, today we're coming back with a bit of a, I guess you could call it a tool haul. This was from a tool meet that I went to uh, this past week, uh, last Wednesday, out out near where I live. Uh, and this is just some of the stuff that I picked up there. Uh, this is just stuff from the tool meet. I don't want to uh, include other stuff I picked up. Uh, last couple of weeks uh, in uh, garage sales and retail. Uh, I think that video might be too long if I included this stuff. So uh, maybe in the next few days or week, I'm going to make a video on just two hauls. Let me put this back uh, to make some room here so we can check this out. Okay, yeah, this is the stuff I picked up at the tool haul. Um, it was a, it wasn't as big as the turnout. They have these every two months, uh, at the fourth, the fourth Wednesday of the given month. Uh, so October, the last one was in August. August was, it was a summer month. It was nice weather. It was, a, a, I think, a lot bigger turnout. This one was, it was a decent turnout, but uh, not as big. And let me just show you some of the stuff I picked up. Uh, here's a Williams, as we as we all know, as you all know, Williams is like one of my favorites. So I saw this Williams, uh, not really tongue and groove pliers, but kind of multi-adjustable plier this is the 1520 old Williams with Williams on top of the diamond W so probably 30s early 40s on this one and I picked up I was happy to find this let me see if I can get these out I picked up picked up partial set maybe or a set of these Williams with the side raised panels I think a couple weeks ago I found a tiny one just a single tiny one uh, small size of these these are the ones that I kind of have the raised panels on the side they go out kind of shoot out into the middle of the beam there like that and this is Super Wrench. These are Williams from I think late late 50s, no late 40s, early 50s, in in around that that time period. And here's the set that I found. Williams USA. This is the seven eighths, uh, three quarters. Uh, there's the model number. I think it's 1731A. And here is the A1729. Three quarters and five eighths. And here's the smaller 916, five eighths. Is that one five eighths? Yeah. I guess that's two five eighths, one three quarters, and one nine sixteenths on the opposite. Super wrench looks like somebody tried to drill a hole through it. This is the one seven two seven. And I was happy to find those. And I think this set uh these five ran me like eight bucks. And I found a small, little, tiny hand drill. And you know me, I always like small tools. And I like hand drills. I mm, have a, like a small collection of hand drills. I try not to get them too much. They kind of they kind of accumulate real fast because you can find them pretty easily. And I think I'm good where I'm at. If I find something odd or different or desirable I might pick one up and this one was pretty tiny 
So I figured I'd get this one. That one was like two bucks. Uh, and here's some more Williams. This is old Williams again with the W diamond below the Williams. This is one of those S uh, wrenches, 9 16 three quarters thick old Williams in need of a wrap evapor rust and here's another Williams this is 7 16 USS and I can't even make it out with the rust there but another USS number and on this side it has the Williams the old Williams uh, 30s through early 40s symbol picked that up and I picked up this pair of pliers of uh, uh, forged USA I was trying to figure out what it was then I saw the little the little badge you see it barely see it there it's kind of pounded in uh, kind of flat looks like a little badge with a V that's Vlecek or Velcek so that's that and for these three I think I paid for these three, I paid like a dollar each. And what else is in here? I picked up this file set. Uh, not the greatest brand, I guess. Great Neck. Uh, I think I picked them up because it says Italy. I think these were made in Italy instead of China. Or wherever they make them now. And when I was checking them out. They seem pretty good. Uh, the f the file, the business end of the file seemed like it was pretty aggressive still and in good shape. So I said, why not? And these come in handy. I've used them. I've had, I have an old set of uh, Harbor Freight, like center forge ones, similar to these with like little plastic handles. I've had those for like 20 25 years and i still use them every once in a blue moon i think this was two bucks oh here's something actually this i bought retail uh just before <laughs> just before i went to the tool meet i stopped at a at an antique place and this is a colonial usa small i guess three inch pocket knife uh, lock back I kind of like these even though they're not kind of the best quality as far as the build like these are hollow instead of solid brass uh, a, la, a la colonial but I think these blades were pretty good I, I, I don't think they were stainless I think they were carbon steel on a lot of these models I kind of remember these a long time ago when uh, I was in the army, I think. And I would go <laughs> to like Walmart or wherever and they would have a display with these style of uh, knives <coughs> way back when. And I picked this up and this obviously is $2. And oh, for the knife, I think I paid 3 bucks for the knife. And this is an expensive bit that you would use on those, uh, what do you call those? Those uh, braces. This is, I guess, if you didn't want to spend a whole mm, lot of money on a whole set of bits for the brace, you can get something like this, which you can adjust the size and it expands to kind of whatever size you want. This is Craftsman USA Circle. What is that? Circle D, maybe? I'm not sure. But this is pretty brand new. I don't think it's seen much use, maybe a little bit. And it came in the package, so you know me, I always like things in the package. 
So I picked this up and here is a replacement blade, I guess. Uh, one of these blades, you can unscrew that and take them off. To adjust them or to take them off, you can unscrew the screw. And I guess here's the replacement. And that's that. I have a couple of these. This is a small one though. Usually they come bigger than this. I've seen this one's kind of small. And what else? I think for two bucks, I found this uh, thread gauge. I don't know. I always like these. I don't know why. I have a I have a couple of them, not not a lot, but uh, I think these these kind of come in handy when are you trying to figure out uh, the thread on a given I don't know bolt or whatever. So that's cool to have. This is I think American Standard gauge, uh, New York General. And yeah, American US standard threads. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Two bucks, not bad. Uh, what else is in here? I found, I guess, kind, kind of a set of crow foot. Uh, these crow foot sockets, I guess you would call them. And these were East Co. That's kind of why I got them. Uh, wish they were metric instead of SAE, but they look to be in pretty good condition. Somebody wrote on them, but whatever. East Co. USA. This is 11 16 7 16 half and nine sixteens and I also pissed, uh, picked up this East Co adapter and this is three apes to half inch East Co. I think for these I paid like nine bucks for this set. And for a dollar I picked up this uh this Jacobs number one uh, for my drill that I bought a while ago that didn't come with one of these chucks uh, chuck keys and apparently everybody made a chuck key to their own specifications because the threads fit on the craftsman Sears craftsman but this post here is too thin to fit in the hole. It fits in the hole, but it, it, it swims around. It should be a thicker uh, post. So, I don't know. Kind of kind of let down there. But for a dollar, I took a chance. And, I don't know. I guess I have one, a spare, in case something shows up that I need that for. And the rest is I found some ratchets uh, I found a couple of bonnies here's an old bonnie uh, 4093 uh, JV I think this is from the early 30s I could be wrong but uh, from what I can figure out, I went to Alloy Artifacts. And from what I can figure out, uh, from the markings and everything, and that supposedly is a date code, the JV. I'm thinking this is early 30s. And it's one of, it goes in one direction, has this removable uh, anvil. But this anvil, I don't think it's original to this... Uh, to this ratchet I think this this was probably made by somebody else I don't see a maker but it says USA but it does fit in there and I guess it does work and it's very muffled this probably has a good amount of dried grease in there that 
probably you can <laughs> maybe dunk it in Marvel Mystery Oil or something and it will loosen up a bit. Uh, unfortunately, you can't take these apart unless you drill out these um, pins. You see there's one, two, three, four, five pins I count there. And they go all the way through. You can see them on this side also. So kind of a bummer, but anyway, that's cool. It's a cool find from way back when. And this other Bonnie, I'm thinking this is a wartime Bonnie because this is a, this is the T35, but if you look at uh, these numbers here, PWA1394, I forget the name of it, but in all alloy artifacts, they have it, uh, that's an aeronautic or an airplane manufacturer. So I think that these were made for this particular uh, airplane manufacturer, probably during the war years. So probably World War II-ish from that time period. I have, a, I have another T-35 and I did a video on it and I actually removed <laughs> the, the pins I drilled them out and I showed the mechanism. If you guys are interested, you can go look at that video to see what inside these ratchets. But I didn't, that one didn't come with the PWA numbers on it. And another ratchet I found is this Williams. This is again the older Williams with the. Williams with Diamond W underneath. Uh, this is the S51. So I'm thinking this is from the 30s. Uh, I don't think they came with holes drilled through the handle. So somebody drilled a hole through the handle to, I guess, put it up somewhere or put it on the wall. And something interesting here someone reconfigured the the switch and paw uh, mechanism here it works it ratchets but I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do a video on this one uh, someone did something interesting I did a video on an s51 a while back if you want to go look and see what makes what makes these tick um, they're very tricky to take apart uh, you see a lot of these inoperable and people complain a lot about these because if you don't take them apart in a certain order they will lock up on you and you won't be able to take them apart uh, it's kind of like the Venus flytrap of ratchets so uh, I'll get into that more when I take this one apart again. Uh, okay, I got that. And I picked up some... Some New Britain. Here's New Britain P36. Small, uh, small little pliers there. Adjustable. I like these pliers. Whenever I see them, I pick them up. <laughs> I'm glad it was New Britain. I don't think I have a New Britain in that size. And here's a P34 uh, tongue and groove New Britain. This one's a little bit uh, needs some lubrication. It's smaller. This is like maybe seven inches or eight inches. So kind of a smaller one. You can see the teeth there. Not too bad a shape need some cleaning and I found a stud remover another new Britain made in USA the NS4916 and it's kind of a, a really chunky heavy-duty stud remover it's a half inch drive there probably needs some cleaning also lubrication but that's what that looks like and I found this long, 
I can't even fit it in the, in the camera. This is a, let me measure it. Uh, a 14 inch extension. A quarter inch extension, 14 inches. Kind of offbeat. That's why I picked it up. I don't, mm, I don't usually, I'll pick up an extension if it's like really cheap and a good brand. But I, I figured I kind of like this one because it's, it's super long and it's got kind of a an unusual length. And the maker is Plum, made in USA. And so Plum, so probably from the 40s. I'm gonna guess on this one, and this is the 4764, and yeah, just the length of it kind of made it for me. And what else we got? And I think about two more left, three more. Here's a battery uh, plier. I kind of like, I just liked it. I'm thinking green. I was thinking maybe this is diamond. But unfortunately, there are no markings that I can see on this. So, but it looks, I'll say, I'm pretty sure, like 90%, this is USA made. But uh, unfortunately, no markings. Oh, I have no idea. If you guys know, let me know. And I picked up this uh, Snap-on. Uh, this, I'm not too sure what it's for. I think I looked this up, I forgot what it was for. Uh, I think for carburetors? I think this, this is an old, uh, like, carbureted style tool or something like that. Snap on MD17. Uh, I don't see a date code on this. I didn't really look, but I don't see one uh, right off the top here. No, I don't see any date codes on this. Needs a little cleaning, but uh, doesn't look like it's seen much use. So, kind of a, an interesting, weird little tool. And oh, what else was there? Oh, this wrench. <laughs> this wrench. Uh, another offbeat wrench that I kind of uh, had to have, I guess. Uh, Black Hawk. This is Black Hawk made, patent pending, USA. This is from the Hexite sort of collection. Hexite. And this is a wedge head uh, ratchet. You see how thick the head is and it's made like a wedge and it has like a broaching mark in the middle and on the other side also it has like a round kind of broaching there not sure what that's for uh, this is three quarters and seven eighths and you see how thick that is how they made this head uh, into kind of a thick wedge and it has like the little cutout in the middle which is attractive and pretty nice overall the fit and finish on this I think I read somewhere that these were possibly also offered on in um, I could be wrong but I think I, I read a snap-on catalog might have had these or or something I don't think these were made in large set I think they only made like two or three sizes in the in these and from what I can gather is that uh, they made this thick wedge head so you can not only engage something hard to reach flat, you can also cant it like that and engage something maybe hard to reach on a cant like that if, if the thing was uh, in a weird position. It have enough uh, beef or width there that you can twist it a little bit and reach whatever you're trying to go for but a heavy piece and kind of happy I found that 
Okay, guys, uh, that's pretty much all I got at the tool meet. Uh, all the stuff, the snap-on, uh, the wrenches, the, all the, the, what do you call it, uh, the New Britain stuff, and the ratchets. I think I paid 40 bucks for those three ratchets, this, uh, the stud remover, and everything, everything from the ratchets on, I think I paid 40 bucks for so yeah well i was trying to make this a, a short video but <laughs> as you see it turns always turns into a long video all right guys that's all i have for now uh until next time oh and p.s and a shout out to scout crafter uh he's always he always makes it out to this uh tool meet out by me so he was there again uh this tool meet and if you want to check it out what it looks like and it's at the frank brush barn if you want to look it up if you want to look and see what the grounds and the tool meet look like and what was available there check out his last video that was posted on friday and he puts up video on the tool meet okay guys until next time